Hey guys, Jeremy with Soccer Innovations. Today I want to just go over how to quickly set up your MVP team shelter. What you're going to get with the kit is you're going to get a uh, simple wrench and a Allen wrench and you're going to use pretty much the same bolts across the entire shelter. So don't get nervous with all the nuts, bolts, and washers. You'll have two washers per bolt and one nut per bolt and they can go pretty much anywhere. The only difference uh, pl the only place that it cannot go is in the wheels and we'll go through that with you guys. So you'll get this nine step drawing on how to put it together. But me and my uh, buddies over here, Pablo and Rico, Rico for Rico Suave, nice hair, huh? Um, he's gonna, those two are gonna help me put these uh, pieces together to show you how to build your shelter. So I'm gonna hand off the tools to the experts. I'm gonna walk you guys through this. All right, so first step that we wanna do is we want to put together the crossbar here. You're gonna have eight bolts. They each have two washers on them, as you can see here, and a nut. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go on the front side of the crossbar. If we lift this over, you notice the front side here, the the head of the bolt is on the outside. We want that because we don't want the cover going over here and rubbing through a hole from the end of the bolt on the wrong end. So make sure that the rounded side where the Allen wrench is, is on the front face of the crossbar. And to know that is you'll have the little tabs that take the arches. Those will be on the back side. The front side should be completely smooth. Once you bolt in, these eight washers, bolts, and nuts. So we want to put a, let me show you here. You want to take your bolt, throw your washer on it, stick it through here. You have this curved C channel piece on the outside that's going to go on the front. You're going to have a flat back side with two tabs on it for the arch. On the back side, you'll stick this bolt hole through. Then you'll put another washer. And then you'll hand tighten the bolt. The nut, sorry. And you'll repeat that step for here, 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 here. All hand tighten. We're going to hand tighten everything first. Once we have everything put together, we'll come back and tighten it down. And you'll do this last. And there's a reason behind that, and we'll tell that to you at the end. So, next step, after you have assembled the crossbar, we're going to attach the left and right side pieces. So, Pablo, Rico, we lift this up, and what we're going to do is we're going to fit this piece into the tabs here, and we're going to stick some bolts through at the crossbar. So, if you guys will... The best way to do this is to lay this down, sorry. You'll lay this down so this is nice and flat. That way you can pop in the side piece here. Now these tabs can bend a little bit. They can be tight fitting. Don't worry, you can just bend them back a little bit. They're not going to break. Once you get these holes lined up with the side piece and the crossbar, You'll stick the bolts through, and similar to like we see on the crossbar, we want the round curved side of the bolt to always be on the outside and the nut on the inside. Again, this has to do with when you're wrapping the tarp around the outside of the frame, that you're not putting any sharp edges to the fabric material that will cause it to tear. You finger tighten it. Once you do one side, head on over to the other side, and you'll repeat that step. There's two bolts in the top corners, so they will slide the opposite side piece on, again with the round piece of the bolt on the outside at all times. So you'll have the bolt, round piece on the outside, you'll slide a washer through there, You'll slip it through the frame. You'll put another washer on the outside. 
and you'll tighten on the nut finger tight. Now these are aircraft nuts, so they have a, uh, you'll, you will have to use tools to tighten these down, but that allows it that once you tighten it down, these will not back out. That's the difference between a regular nut and an aircraft nut. Once you've attached the two side pieces, you will come here and you'll assemble this back support bar. And this bar that does not have the tie down steel on top of it, this is going to be your middle support bars. The ones that have the tie bar welded on, these will have the tabs facing up. The two tabs that have a half of a tab and half a tab on each end will mate up to each other. And what that does is that creates a single tab to where the middle arch support will slide into it and lock into place. So once you have these two bars leveled up, you'll have a, we'll take this one, you'll have two plates here. There's three plates that come in the kit. They're all the same. Doesn't matter which two that you use. So you'll place one on the front. You'll see that there's four bolt holes here in front of the middle clip. You'll place one there and then one on the back side. Then you'll take your bolt, washer, and nuts. Just stick one washer on the bolt. You'll slide it through the back side with the round piece on the outside of the frame. So you'll slide that through the holes. Then you'll take your other washer, your second final washer, slide it on the bolt, take your aircraft nut, finger tighten it down. And on the aircraft nut, the side with the nylon ring on the inside of the nut, it's white, sometimes it can be blue. This will be on the outside of the nut. And if I can show you this, will you guys, uh, while they're putting the rest of those bolts together, I'll show you here. Tony, is this close enough? There's a white little nylon washer in here. That's what keeps the bolt locked on. It won't back out. That will be on the outside of the bolt. This is the round side. So you'll put every bolt with one washer on it. Let it slide down. You'll slide it through the frame. You'll add the other washer on here. And when you're adding the nut, the nylon insert goes on the outside here so that you can simply screw it on and it will physically stop right when it hits that washer. And that's where, where you're gonna need the tools to really be able to tighten through that. Now, if you have it in backwards, it won't work so well. You'll realize it right off the bat that it's not threading on there. That's how you know you have the wrong side. So it should be nice and easy where you can spin it with your finger till it's finger tight. That's what we're gonna do on every frame bolt that we have here until the final piece is put together. We set it up and then we'll come back through and tighten everything. Once you have your back support bar. Will you guys lift it up a little bit so we can show them um, what this bar is? So this is what it looks like. Now it's okay to be loose. We're gonna, we're gonna hand tighten that at a later time. This is what the back bar is. All right, you guys can set that down. Once you have your back bar assembled, your left and right side pieces and your crossbar, Pablo, am I right? Are we gonna pull this thing a little bit forward and lift it up and then install the back bar? All right, so the next step is since we're in a tight space here, it's raining outside, so we're trying to do this video right here inside our, our warehouse. We're gonna create some room by sliding it forward so that we can tip this thing over to its, I say, final resting position. So we'll slide it forward. Might need an extra hand or two if you have one. Three people is always better than two, but you can get by with two. And I've done this myself one time, but I don't recommend it. Tony, should we shift this way? 
All right, for the better, let's shift a little bit towards the dock door. There we go. Got it. All right. Now, once we have this on its frame properly, as it should be in the final product, we're going to install this back bar that we just put together with the two support pieces in the middle. So we'll grab this. On each end of the side pieces are C-clips that will accept this back support bar. You'll slide them in, and again, you'll take your bolt for each end piece with the rounded side on the outside of the frame. So when I say outside, I am inside the frame right now, like we'll be sitting down on the bench. And on the outside is the outside perimeter of the frame. So the bolt will go in side so that the smooth rounded edge is on the outside perimeter of the frame. Once we have that bolt in on both sides, you'll see Pablo over here is already connecting Brian, let me borrow that real quick. This corner piece. This is a new addition to our MVP4. And what this corner piece does is adds a lot more rigidity to the corners of the frames. Our MVP4 frame is 33 times stronger than our previous one and equally or more stronger than any other aluminum built one from the competitors. We do not do aluminum. It is too easy to bend, um, and these things, it's not a matter of if they will roll, it's a matter of when, if you're not anchoring it down properly. So what we do to help provide the anchoring situation is we have this plate now. We highly recommend a concrete pad if you have one, and you'll use these bolt holes here for anchoring points to anchor down into your concrete pad. If you do not, you can use these as anchoring points with spiral spikes, hammer in the spikes with the little dove uh, beak at the end of it. Those work excellent and chain it through. There are many options. Turf is always the hardest. It will always be that. Um, that is a, a pain point for every shelter that is out there is just weighing it down. And that just comes down to sheer weight. And if, you, if something does have the ability to roll, you certainly want steel. Steel, you can get a sledgehammer and you can hammer it back into place. Aluminum, once it bends, it's forever gone and weak. Uh, it will then fracture. So you're gonna take this plate here and you're gonna set it in the corner. And there are four holes, two on each corner. And again, you're gonna take your bolt with the round side on the outside of the perimeter of the frame, slide it through, put your washer and nut finger tighten it down. So you'll have your key points here. So you'll bolt it here, 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 and here. And in the middle are the anchor points that I showed you if you have a concrete pad. Drill some holes in here, drop in your anchor, and bolt in from the top your concrete anchor bolt. And that is gonna add extreme rigidity to your frame and prevent it from rolling, flipping, and high winds, hurricanes, so on and so forth. Uh, you always want to, if you can, always anchor something down. Like goals, sometimes it's just not possible. Next step, after Rico finishes tightening that uh, last corner support down, you'll get your arches here, there's three arches. You have your one side arch. This is gonna be just a simple arch. The arch that's gonna go in the middle is going to have a welded on flat steel bar. This piece right here, the third and final arch, is going to have just the, the arch bar. So there will be no welded on piece. The first bar and the second bar of the arches, the arch bars, are not going to have anything on it and they can be interchanged. They're interchangeable. The middle one is specific to the middle. 
So let's put the middle one on first, guys, so we can eliminate any confusion. So these arches are not um, universal in top to bottom. There is a top and there is a bottom. The top part you will find has a, a much sharper rounded edge and the back part is a flatter straight up and down. So that's gonna be the back side. It also is easy to figure that out by seeing this back support bar that you'll find here behind Rico and see, there he goes. Right here, point, Apollo E pointed out, right there. That's gonna be your middle bar and that's how you know that's gonna be on the bottom side. If you're worried about which way the other two bars go, once you have the middle bar set up, you can actually match that bar by setting it up next to this middle bar. And that'll tell you, as long as it matches that same arc, that's the right way. If it does not match it, and you can clearly see there's a difference between the two, you just need to flip it over and then you'll find the right way from there. So once you have this middle piece supported, uh, arch support in here, we'll grab one of the other two. Again, either one of these works for, for the left or right side. Ah, an easy way to figure out which side is what. The left and right arch support bars have the uh, clip in it. So you'll see it, it is going to run horizontal this way. And that's what's going to be the bottom. So the top one, you'll stick the bolt through. Now on these top back sides, it does not matter which direction you go with the bolt. And that is because there's no canvas material that will cross paths with this bolt. So you, there's no right or wrong way to put the bolt in the back side of the C-clips. You can go from the left or you can go from the right. Either way works. Now this can be a tight fit and you may need a helping hand to hold up this middle part because it's not tight. Sometimes a rubber mallet helps. I don't suggest a hammer because you can chip the powder coating, but it's not gonna hurt it if you chip the powder coating. A little rust won't hurt the shelter. It is beefy and rust isn't gonna eat it away. So once you have that bolt in there, in the end, we're gonna hold this all tight and we'll make this all tight for now. You're not gonna ruin it or hurt it by letting it sag a little bit. This shelter frame is a tank. And when I mean a tank, I've seen some crazy stuff and it is, it is a tough beast, I can tell you that. It is by far the strongest uh, frame shelter cover, bench cover, stadium bench cover. We call it MVP Team Shelter. It is by far the strongest shelter on the market. So as you can see here, we have the middle arch, or the middle left arch, middle arch, middle right arch. You'll see this bar coming down. The proper way is to have this tab right here at the same level in height as you see it on here. It'll be level with the core support here in the middle. Then you're gonna have tabs and tabs. When these all line up perfectly straight, then you know these bars are in the right position. It's really pretty easy. Don't let all the screws and all the parts scare you away. I promise you it's super easy and we're doing this in real time. So we're probably, what, 10 minutes into it? Do you have a timer on there? 18? We're 18 minutes into it from the very beginning to here. And look at that, we're starting to see a frame. There's only two more pieces to add. 18 minutes finger tightening. You probably double that, tightening it all down. So on your first one, it takes us 40 minutes to put one together. It, your first one might take you an hour, hour and a half. Uh, after that, you do the first one, the next one's gonna, you might cut that time pretty close to half because now you're gonna know how to do it all and that all the screws are the same. So it makes it very easy and very quick to put together. Once we have all these side pieces put into place, finger tightened down, we only have one more step to do before we tighten everything down. And that is your core middle support bar. This is the easiest part to put together. And what you do here is that you'll take this bar here and there are holes 
There's one horizontal here in the middle. There's one at the end. And the middle part that you'll know that this bar goes in the middle is if you rotate it one quarter turn, has two holes here at the top. These two holes right here are gonna be attaching to your two holes here on this side of the bracket. You'll do the same for this pole. The two holes on the inside will mate to these two. An important part about installing these parts, you guys can start throwing that uh, one of those bars on each side, is again, this is an important part to make sure that you put the bolts in correctly. So you'll come, you'll take this bolt, round it top on the outside, and you'll put it through here from the outside, pushing it in. So you'll slip it in here. You'll line these two up. First, you probably should put a washer on there. My fault. So you put the washer, rounded part on the outside, slide the bolt through, washer on, bolt finger tight. And now, well, excuse me, I did this wrong. Not everybody does it right, huh? Sometimes we make mistakes. I forgot an important part here. This is the third and final support bar. This is new to our MVP4, and this adds a lot of rigidity to when you're moving the bar. So put the same way I just put it through. Now we have the, you'll slide on this support. Washer on. And then you'll throw on the bolt, finger tight. Make sure the, sorry, the nut, make sure the nut is on the inside of the frame and the rounded head of the bolt is on the outside. You'll do this three more times. One more for that bolt. And then you'll do, you'll add the other bar. And you pretty much then have a full team shelter. The only part, is if you want to add your wheel kit. Wheel kit is for, it comes with the shelter, but not everybody has to use the wheel kit. The wheel kit works great if you're moving your shelters. If you have the concrete anchors um, pad for your shelter, then the wheel kit is not necessary because it's obvious that you're not going to move it. But we'll go through that. It's a very simple to use wheel kit. I'll actually go through it with you right now while they're putting together that final piece. What you're gonna have on this wheel kit is you're gonna have this big wheel. When you put it together, you want the head of the bolt on the outside, facing outside. So this will be your outside. With this wheel comes these two bearing inserts. So here's your bearing and we'll slide this insert here on the inside right into this hole. We'll take the other side and you'll slide it right through and now the wheel turns on the bearing. You'll also get this huge chunk of heavy duty steel with this massive bolt welded onto it and this big aircraft nut pretty obvious, but you'll slide the wheel through here with the nuts of these bolts facing up on the inside. You'll flip this over, you'll take this big aircraft nut, and with an adjustable wrench or some channel lock pliers, you can tighten this down, but for now we'll finger, finger tighten it. And then the wheel will go on the outside of the frame. So you'll see this curved part down here. This is going to connect to the bottom part of your side piece. And this part right here will mount to the top part. To make it easier, when installing, I would install the wheel last. 
so that you have easier access to the second bolt on the frame. So you're gonna take your wheel, set it off to the side. You're gonna get, probably hand me that bolt. You're gonna take, there's two holes here on the side of the frame. One at ground level, one about three, four inches off the ground. So you're gonna take your bolt with washer, with this giant bolt attachment welded onto the metal piece on the outside of the frame. You stick it through the side piece frame, put your washer on there and throw your nut on there. And again, we're gonna finger tighten it. You take another bolt. Do you have another bolt, Pablo? Thank you. And you'll do the same thing but on the ground level of the frame. As always, we'll take the rounded piece and make sure it's on the outside. You'll put it through the metal frame here. It'll mount through, then put your second washer and aircraft nut. You'll finger tighten it. And now your wheel frame support is here. Easy part is just sliding on the wheel and finger tightening your aircraft nut. And now this wheel should spin. And to engage this wheel, when you're moving it, it's very easy. I recommend two people doing this, but you can get by with one person. Two people is much easier because you can have them on each side and you just, I'll show you. Kind of just put your foot against here. You take the top and you have somebody else. Rico, if you'll just kind of, we'll just barely do it here. We'll lean it forward like this. And the, this engages the wheels, and you can then push the shelter front, back, left, or right. All right, we can set it down. Your final step in setting up your team shelter is straighten all your bars out, because we just have them finger tighten. So first, we'll start out with the back frame. We'll make sure this is pretty straight to the eye. Doesn't have to be perfect. It'll align itself and then tighten down all these bolts. You can tighten them as tight as you want. And the tighter, the better, because it holds everything in place and there's no room for movement, as these are laser cut. And so you can go a little bit left or a little bit right. That's if there's any movement, if there's any tweaks, if there's ever any damage by a mower hitting it and bends it a little bit, there is movement to adjust and you don't have to go out there and try to drill a hole into a frame that makes it really hard where there already is a hole. It's hard to get the length out of that without making a, a mess of yourself. The final and one of the most important parts of putting together your shelter is this middle post. It's a crossbar post. And what's important with this is there's a, a C channel right here. And what you'll do is you'll want to push that up from the bottom. And you want to push the back one down as far as you can, the back channel plate. So that these two are as level as possible at the top. So if I drop this down, you can see this back plate sticking up a little bit right up top here with these sharp edges. We don't want that. We want to push this up and this back plate down so that these are equally mated. And then you can tighten these down while somebody is holding this up in the middle so that this is flat. If you tighten it while it's loose like this, you will have it sag a little bit here in the middle. It's important that someone holds it up and you push up, let's say like this, and then you can have someone come behind you and tighten it tight. So that way that bar will be flat. 
It will not damage it if it sags a little bit. It's heavy duty steel. You're not gonna have any problems. Aesthetically, you want that thing as straight as possible because that gives your shelter that crisp, clean look. I hope this helps in setting it up. Oh, we got Siri talking to me. Sorry guys. But yes, that's the conclusion of setting up your team shelter. All you have to do from here is throw on your cover after you tighten everything down and you're done. The cover will follow this setup video and so we'll add this in after the fact and we'll show you some tips and tricks on how to set up this shelter or throw your cover on here, sorry. Throw your cover on here and make it look perfect every time. After your first five or ten times of, of putting it on and taking it off, you'll find your own best practice and there's no wrong way to put it on. There's just a lot of right ways. <laughs> Depends which way that you like it. Uh, you can zip tie, use bungees, bungee balls. We include bungee balls, but zip ties actually create a better look. But it's kind of a one-time thing because you cut them all off and you got to add all new ones on. Uh, this thing is indestructible. Your tie-down bars here are super strong. You're going to use these to tie your tarps around. Put your bungee balls around, lock them in. These anchor points that you see on the corner of this cold rolled steel here, weld it on. These are tie down points. Whether you have heavy weights, you can make any heavy weight that you want. You can use jugs, giant uh, barrels of water, and you can anchor them down that way. Sandbags, you name it. This is a great hooking point to hook down the back and to hook down the front of your frame. And those are strong. Those are gonna help tie your, your weights down. What's key on a shelter is it is, if it, if it is in high winds, it's going to lift here. So your best practice is to anchor down the front side as much as possible to get the most stability in high wind occasions if you have your cover on. If you take your cover off, these things are pretty strong on its own. I do tell you that you need to anchor them down at all times but by taking the cover off, you significantly add life to your cover, your shelter, and you highly reduce the risk of any flipovers. I hope this step-by-step -step process of setting up our shelters really helped you in the process of putting yours together. We thank you for buying and purchasing our Soccer Innovations MVP Team Shelter. And special thanks to my two buddies over here who helped me put this together. Rico, Pablo, Thank you guys. Tony behind the camera, thank you. And best of luck this season. Call us if you have any problems, we're happy to help. See you guys.